You know, one of the statements that Jesus made that took me the longest time to truly comprehend was the statement that it's better to give than it is to receive. I don't know about you, but I kind of dig receiving, man. I mean, uh, and then I had kids. And when I had kids, uh, I began to understand the true joy that comes from a father getting to give to his children. I got a new picture of what it meant uh, for my heavenly father to that I didn't have to wrench things out of his hands that that God freely gives to his children because he loves them and as I learned to receive that truth from God one of the ways that it began to transform me is that I began to experience the joy that came from not simply being a receiver but from being a giver uh, one of the things that you're going to hear all the time around your Cross Timbers family is this concept of a hope center. Uh, the history that many of you who have already watched the Start Here video, if you haven't, I would encourage you to go back and watch it. You hear me talk about the birth of the Hope Center. The Hope Center was birthed out of a need in the middle of a pandemic. It was, it was the opportunity to meet practical needs in the name of Jesus. But it really, the, the dream for the Hope Center had begun many years before as many of us had gotten involved in local and foreign missions and had begun to experience the joy of the little things in life that brought great joy and great blessing to people and when we got to do it in Jesus' name. And so as we launched this Hope Center, one of the things that we've seen is that when we consistently are looking for ways to be a blessing to somebody else, it opens up all kinds of conversations and opportunities to bring the hope of Jesus. In other words, sometimes people need a sandwich and sometimes people need a sermon, but a lot of times the sandwich is the sermon is what we like to say around here. And what I want to encourage you in is to open your eyes and your neighborhood, in your place of employment, in your apartment complex, wherever you live or work or go to school, and begin to ask God to show you, how can I give hope to somebody else? It doesn't have to be like a 12-point uh, PowerPoint presentation of the gospel. It doesn't have to be that you pay everybody's bills. Many times, it's just an encouraging word. Many times it's a single mom that you come in contact with that you can bless uh, with a coffee gift card. I mean, just looking for a way to bring hope into the lives of other people. Why does this matter so much? Let me tell you why it matters. It matters because when I find myself in pain, when I find myself deficient in some area, my natural tendency is to become narcissistic. I, it becomes all about me. And when my life becomes all about me, the very thing that I'm looking for, I don't experience. Why? Because in the kingdom, it is in giving to others that I receive something that only God can give me. And so I would say to you, how do you become a difference maker? You become a difference maker by when you feel like it and when you don't, making a difference in somebody else's life. I was talking to a friend the other day. I've run a couple of marathons many years and two knee surgeries ago. I ran some marathons and I learned very early. That, you know how you become a marathoner? You get up every day and you run a mile or two or three or four or five and you build up. You become a runner by running. You don't become a runner by reading a book about running. You become a runner by putting on your stretchy pants and getting out there on the road and sweating it up. That's how you become a runner. How do you become a difference maker? You make a difference in somebody else's life. You do it when you feel like it and you do it when you don't. So I got a gift for you today, a practical way for you to begin to not just hear, but experience the truth that it's better to give than it is to receive. It's, it's the daily Difference Maker mission for one month. I want you to take this, uh, this little PDF, and I want you to, for the next 30 days, just 
one day after another, just make a small difference in somebody else's life and watch God begin to work in yours.